Hi everyone, Dylan and I are back again for another video here at the San Dimas Wine Shop. One more week. And yeah, one more week. And this is a great week. We just got finished tasting the wines and I think we were, we had our socks blown off for a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Really great wines. Some really seriously delicious wines. Yes. Um, at least three of them. We, we, we had a difficult time even trying to figure out which is our favorite mm -hmm. because at least three or three and possibly a fourth rank up there as the top yeah, ones on the yeah. taste. I think so. I, I had a top three for sure, but all six of them are great wines and we're looking forward to you guys trying them. Yeah. So um, we'll do our announcements at the end, but we'll go ahead and get started. So our first one, we're actually going back to having a white on the tasting. This is our Finca Vinoa. Think of Anoa. So this is a blend of Treshadura and uh, Godello. This sits up in the northwest corner of Spain, where in Galicia, or as the Spaniards call it, Galicia. Um, and they have got it's it's white country. There are there are a few reds that come out of here, but by far white wines are king. And um, Albarino, ironically, is king in this region. Uh, this is not. This doesn't have any Albarino in it, or if it does, it has a very, very small amount. Uh, it is primarily Trishadura, like 90 plus percent of Trishadura. Um, this is all done in, in stainless steel, and I was telling you at the very beginning, this is my style of wine. I love, I love white wines that are herbaceous. I like white wines that have got a good level of acidity and they've got a little bit of a bitter finish to them. They have and, all those. They have <laughs> all of those. And that's why I'm such a big fan of Sauvignon Blanc and specifically Sancerre because I think Sancerre hits all of those notes. And this wine uh, would definitely be a real stiff competition this with my a, favorite whites. Yeah, yeah, this was a great white. Um, mm -hmm. Great way to start. Great way to start, absolutely. So what would you pair with this? Uh, shellfish, 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 shellfish yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it can stand, and if you wanted to do cheese with this, for those of you that come in and want to do like a good pairing, I would do the goat cheese, and specifically I would do the, um, which is the one that we had the, the one with, no, the, or the Piccadilly. We had that one. Yeah. Oh, we don't have it right we now. We don't have it right now. The herbaceousness of the dill mm -hmm. would go really well with this one. Mm -hmm. Um, but then on my second choice, then I would probably do the Humboldt Fog because the Humboldt Fog has got a good level of acidity and it's goat cheese that'll go really well with it. Pair really well. With yeah, it. for sure. Very nice. All right, so starting our one of our favorite uh, oh. three. This is our Pietra Santa. This is the San Giovese. This is comes out of the Sienega Valley, and this mm -hmm. kind of the Sienega Valley is about 25 miles inland from Monterey. And uh, this is San Giovese, Pietra Santa, as Kristen said, is the house. Um, trying to, yeah, isn't it? It's a hundred. It's a hundred percent San Giovese. It goes through a hundred percent French oak, of which forty percent is new. But there's just something so honest about this wine. We were talking about just how, you know, one of the wines we're going to come to is more of a winemaker's wine, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, this here is more of an honest wine that really, really, um, um, it exposes the terroir of this region. And to me, I smell earth and I smell the vineyard uh, when tasting mm -hmm. this wine. Yeah. It smells absolutely delicious and it's so well made and such a good, honest wine. I think this will be a big hit with everyone. I, I think, agree. I think you guys are really going to like this one. Alrighty. And this is our Twisted Paso, so a blend. And this is our Cab Merlot Antique Verdot blend. Antique Verdot, right. So our good friends from Calcareous, we've been doing, these wines sell a lot. Um, these, uh, we sell a lot of Calcareous wines. Uh, we just got through finishing up the six bottles of their high-end Bordeaux blend, which was, um, I'm gonna put that in my top three of last year's tasting wines. Um, so, uh, this is their second tier label called the Twisted Paso, and it is a Bordeaux blend. It does spend a good amount of time in oak, uh, specifically French oak, uh, 16 months on oak, I believe. So, yeah, but it, uh, if, you like those, if you like those flavors reminiscent of like, kind of like ripe fruit with some firm tannins to it, this is definitely your wine. It's a good wine. Mm -hmm. All right, and... I think this is probably my favorite. <laughs> this is what we have in our glass. This just makes my heart happy. Yeah, this, this is, is a fantastic wine. It, it is an amazing oh wine. Gosh. So, Abadia de Acon is who makes this wine, and 
It is 100% Tempranillo. It does come from Ribera del Duero, which is just northeast of Madrid. I'm sorry, northwest of Madrid. Um, and 100% Tempranillo, it sees a blend of um, American, French, no, I'm sorry, this is completely French oak. Um, and this wine is so complex and layers and layers of flavors. And I bet you even right now as we go back and, and drink these, these, these sips that are last on the glass, each sip is going to taste a little bit different because this wine has, a, has an ability to evolve. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit higher price for Crianza, but absolutely 100% totally well worth it. it. Yeah. Crianza just means that it requires the least amount of aging prior to release. So this spends six months on oak, uh, six months in the bottle before it's released. But man, talk about a knockout of the ballpark. Man, so this good. is I'm, crazy good. I'm putting one aside already. For, for sure. Myself. For sure. So it is <clears throat> hands down probably my favorite. And I've really come to love Spanish, Spanish wines, wines um, exactly. working here. So I knew I was going to love it. <laughs> All right, next we're going to Italy. So the Principe de Butera, this is a Sicilian wine. Uh, once again, this is a Bordeaux blend just made just like this. Mm -hmm. A blend of uh, Cap Sauv Merlot and Petit Verdot. Mm -hmm. um, it does see a good amount of oak. Um, uh, it sees a combination of French, American, and Hungarian oak is the, uh, is the blend, all blended at the end. Uh, but once again, you know, nice big firm tannins and um, a nice little kiss of vanilla, small, but it's there. And uh, talk about something that we were talking about. Was, it reminds I was just us. Just gonna say that. Yeah, it <laughs> reminds us of. Go ahead, tell them. I was just. Um, I tasted it, and I I had this distinct smell, and I was like, I'm not gonna tell Dylan because that's just kind of wacky. It's weird. And then he came and told me it smelled like um, spaghetti and spaghetti and meatballs, that meat sauce, that yeah. red sauce. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I smelled. It, it just has that distinct you know, mm -hmm. smell on the nose. And it, it's funny that we both thought the same thing. I was the only one that was vocal about it. <laughs> he was, he was. I just spurt out whatever yeah, comes across he, my he made me yeah. feel better about feeling that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, and that's not typical of a Bordeaux blend. To be able to smell like a meat sauce and mm -hmm. specifically that vegetal character, basil, yes. to be able to smell that in, a, in in this blend is not really that common. This comes across as an IGT, which means it doesn't need to abide by any of the laws, any of the Italian winemaking laws. This basically is a proprietor's blend. He, he or she does it the way they want to do it, and they package it and ship it out, and it comes across as what we call the lowest rating because it comes across as IGT, which just means that it, it, it requires no standards of any kind, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, just a delicious wine. Yeah, I really like great it. wine. <clears throat> and they're so different. They're, they're both very, the same very blend, different, yeah. they're very different, which is nice. Alrighty, and our other favorite, this is the Dude the out beer. of Napa. This is the winemakers. This is the winemakers wine that I was talking about earlier when we were talking about. I think the Pietra Santa. Um, this is a wine that really, you could tell there's a winemaker's hand involved in this wine, and the dude has a level of consistency. Um, these these remember those Route wines that we had like Route 152. This is the same house that makes the oh. wines. Okay, so same house that makes the wines. They make a lot of these wines, and. Um, the dude, they make a white version and they make a, a red version. I haven't tried that um, And uh, this here is a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cap Franc, and Malbec is the blend. Uh, delicious. <laughs> but caramel, chocolate, vanilla, mm -hmm. um, just real nice baking spices. Yeah. Yes. And, um, you know, just a, a well made, well blended it wine. It's a great wine to end on, it's yeah. great flavor. Really nice. So, enjoy everyone. We yeah. will see everybody. Oh, I should mention, yeah. uh, we're coming up February 8th. It's going to be here before you know it. It's already at the end of January. February 8th <laughs> is when we start our California wine yeah. classes, which so many of you have asked that we do this class. Mm -hmm. And I know it's going to be a sellout. Yeah. Um, it, it always is. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we go. We'll be doing Malibu and Santa Barbara on the first week. So we'll be trying, we'll be talking about Temecula. 
we're not going to be tasting any tomato <laughs> wines, I don't, unless something great comes across we'll on our tastings. <laughs> but we'll talk about why Temecula is what it is, mm -hmm. and then we will spend some time in Malibu Hills, which there's some great wines coming out of there right now, especially in the Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah uh, uh, varietals. And then uh, we're going to go into Santa Barbara, and we're going to go deep into Santa Barbara. There's going to be some great wines out of Santa Barbara. There's some great wines that, that we've already had here at the shop that come out of Santa Barbara. I lived in Santa Barbara for years, so as a result I got to really experience um, wine country in Santa Barbara, and I'm really excited to go back and try some of these wines that we've had. Mm -hmm. So It'll be a great start to the mm -hmm. classes. It really will. So from all of us to yes. you here at the Wine Shop, we thank you for tuning in. Cheers. Have a Cheers. good week. Thank you.